you asked for it, so I'm delivering. You asked, what in the world do you happen to do with this Sherp? Well, this is a typical day. Um, the goal in this whole day was to basically go out and try to determine if I would be able to knock down trees next to a logging road, trees slash brush, slash, slash briars, you name it, um, in the hopes that you could drive a tractor through uh, with a mower so you don't get all cut up. So here, this is just uh, our hunting cabin, so just cruising down here through the lawn. We got a little field road here, um, goes in the back. I am going in first gear right now, so just taking my time, not in a big hurry, letting her warm up a little bit. Um, the cabin is up to your left, very difficult to see with the sun. Nice little wood pile, two little rows right there. That will last us definitely more than a year. There's some good logs put in the do right there. And in Wisconsin, up there on the left, that's the mound system. That's where all the septic goes. That's approximately, I think it's about a six, seven acre field um, that's in a CRP program right now. So nothing's really planted there. On the left here is just an outbuilding. Uh, it's got various equipment that's used in the fields. There's actually even a tree stand this far away from the building and we you see them here. It's right up on the left. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the video or not. No, you cannot. That is right there a food plot that is in desperate need of being mowed uh, that will be mowed next week. So here we go. So this is a fairly steep ditch um, just popping up here. Again, going in first gear, taking my time. Again, wanting to let her, uh, you know, warm up a little bit. So this is just extreme everything mess down here. Uh, there's apple trees that are scattered throughout. There's just a lot of brush, a lot of cover for the deer. Uh, that's about it. The challenge is, as we continue to kind of drive through this whole property, um, here, I'm gonna try to take this thing out here, it looks like. There, just kind of mushing it down a little bit. And again, I hope so you can just drive right over it. The challenge is, is when you do do this with the Sherp, is you're going to see, well this did because it's more brushy material, but, but if those would be trees, they basically kind of pop back up again. And if you actually come back a week a little bit later, uh, in many cases it's very difficult to even see. Now obviously there I'm trying to bust these down because this needs to be a little bit wider. Um, this is fairly flat ground right now. Uh, the top window is open. It's one of the reasons I'm kind of going a little slower and as I progress through this type of terrain, you do shut that window because otherwise uh, there's two hydraulic supports that lift up that window and if you leave them up, unfortunately they get bent. I have bent them a couple times, but remarkably <laughs> Uh, you can just grab a hold of them and bend them back again. It's crazy. There's right there a nice old scrape from the past. The challenge is here, when you're starting to see this, is it's is at a significant angle. And there's not a lot of a room in between these trees as you're driving through. So, like that tree there on the right is basically hitting the right side of the tire. In fact, I did hit it right there. So, and when it does that, it slightly hits the small little mud flappish thing that's on top and it, it'll bend it. So that's a disadvantage about driving the Sherp through the woods. Um, there's just some bending that usually needs to take place uh, after you do that if you're in too tight of an area. And when you're backing up and going forward and you've got both wheels that are hitting a tree, um, Normally what you would do when the Sherp is under stress is you try to let out the clutch with both levers out. It just seems to be a lot smoother in doing it that way. Um, I guess they have to live it. Come on along sometime and you will find out. Not a lot of stuff here. We'll get there, we'll get there. The temperature right now, I think it was actually about 9 o'clock in the morning. I would guess it was about 72 maybe, not, not too warm or not too cold. It was actually beautiful. Uh, the morning started off in the mid-50s. Um, 
it warmed up fairly quickly once that sun started coming out. You can kind of notice here as I'm going through here, I should have made the camera such that you could see the outside of the shirt, but the wheels are basically touching on both sides here of these trees. And that, that's, that's not pleasant. <laughs> Hope we can see that. Uh, we have a tree in front of us. Uh, it will be gone soon. Got the window closed just so we don't break anything. So I thought I could give you a little bit different view view from the outside so I stopped up here ahead and uh, put a camera down to the bottom so you can see what it looks like when I'm coming through. Really it's effortless. As you can see I am coming down the hill a little bit. Just in first gear again my foot's barely on the throttle. Trees are just, just drive through them. It, that's what it's made to do. No problem at all. Notice that one screen between those two wheels? That's where the engine exhaust is blowing out from. The radiator is right behind that. So what I thought I could do is just turn around here and come back the same way as I just came, give you a little bit different perspective. Notice that screen there between those two wheels. That is the intake. That is not a good thing when it's filled up with leaves or cattails or what have you. Um, if it would start to overheat, that's where you stop and take it off, which is I, what I did just coming up here. So I had some pretty decent footage beyond this initial scene, but unfortunately that sun was blasting into the window and you couldn't see a heck of a lot. But fortunately, I did have Brad and Rage the Wonder Dog at the bottom of the hill who I met up with. So here I am coming through those trees, meeting up with those fellows, and yes indeed, Rage. His name came from a tip used on an arrow that's commonly used at the hunting cabin. Oh, there's a tree, huh? It didn't really seem to slow you down a lot now, did it? It, it's just too steep. There's no way you can do that. Right now I'm actually driving around an apple tree, which is hard to be able to see, but heck, it's a good place to play, right? So play a little bit and uh, have a little fun. Well, we're coming up to the end of this video. The video right after this one that I'm gonna put out here is mainly drone footage. Uh, I'll give you a little snippet or show of that here right at the end of this video. Uh, I should have that out in about a week or so. Somehow I'll have a link in this video or something so you can uh, go to it. Uh, this was just a picture that was taken with the drone. I'm just zooming in, zooming in on it with the computer like to give a special thanks to uh, Rage and Brad for helping me produce this one. Uh, it means a lot. Hope all is well. Subscribe. Love to hear comments and what you think about it and how I can make these better in the future. Take care.